What's going on, everybody? This is Chadish. We're back at it again, coming at you with another Destiny 6 video. I don't know if you guys realize this, but it's been already one month since I've been playing this game since YDCB has showcased this on his channel and got me hooked. So uh, what we're going to be doing today is basically just kind of focusing on some of the things that I do in a typical day. I think that uh, with respect to where the community is at, there's been a lot of people, as especially as of recent here in this last week, week and a half here, uh, started to play this game and um, have seen a couple of videos maybe early on getting people set up with regards to guys. But some people have been asking random questions uh, for me as far as like, what what's the kind of typical things that you do? How do you go about managing your resources? And, and, and how do you go about your day so uh, what we're gonna be doing today is two things we're gonna spend the first part just kind of talking about a typical day for me uh, when it comes to this particular game and then we're gonna be busting out that special arena if you guys didn't know already this week is the special arena the natural four star natural three star natural five star one we're gonna be focused on the natural four star I'm pretty excited about that but before we get into that let's talk about what we kind of do on a daily basis here so first and foremost the stuff that you guys already understand right when it comes to this game and, and managing the uh, the resources that you can up get, you're definitely going to make sure that you're doing all the daily achievements you can possible. The rewards you get is second to none, and then you know combine that with the weekly achievements. Uh, in addition to like the airship, the free resources that you're going to be getting throughout the day is something that you definitely want to make sure you're taking advantage of. Uh, one of the things that I realized when playing this game is uh, the obviously the game is very generous we already know that so many raids resources and whatnot but that 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 sort of uh, generosity slows down a little bit after those first couple of weeks after you start to knock out some of those uh, different achievements those different rewards and so you know the the rewards that you get are going to be coming again from the achievements uh, from the different events that are going on, from the tumor prophecies that are going on, and then you know after like you know the end end of the week when the arena resets, um, you know all that stuff, you're going to be getting all those resources there. So you know making sure that you're on top of that is pretty important. Um, one of the things that I also do is with respect to the checking the achievements is the challenges. Um, ba basically anything in that achievement window, I'm going to be taking a look at it, seeing where I'm at. Um, especially after you get, you know, a few weeks into it and you start to see the amount of rubies, uh, you know, decrease a little bit here. Checking those challenges and seeing which ones you're kind of close to. Some of them are going to give you keys. Some of them are going to give you gold. Uh, but most importantly, uh, some of them are going to give you rubies. So if you are relatively low on your rubies, you're going to need a couple of rubies to maybe replenish your keys or get something crazy in the shop that you're really looking to get. I mean, you definitely want to keep an eye out on that because it's quite it's quite uh, surprising to me how quickly you can knock out those challenges, especially if those challenges are something that you can easily take care of uh, with overnight farm or daily farming at work okay uh, next one up is the time shop so when I first got started in this game there was a couple of recommendations that kind of people talked about here and there to kind of focus on uh, you know with regards to stuff that you know purchase in the time shop I think the number one thing for me uh, that I focused on was the awakening materials the the basic and the improved awakening materials for whatever element I had um, you will soon realize that when you hit that plateau, especially in like the hard stages or whatnot, um, you know, you're working on those orbs, getting into plus nine, getting those percentage based orbs. Um, you know, once you get everything kind of locked down and you realize that and the only way to improve your effective HP is by, you know, getting that first six star and improving the overall stats. One of the easiest things that can be done, um, is awakening your monsters, um, especially, you know, down the road. I mean, obviously any, any awakening is going to help out the one star is two star. Uh, but getting some of those uh, to three star, uh, you know, some of them, uh, obviously they give the appearance change, but some of them give a, it seems like some of them give a, a stat increase, whether it's HP, attack, defense, you know, any of those three are going to help your overall team, the team combat power, the team HP, the team defense. I mean, it's going to help it out all. Um, you know, that was really, really important to me. I saw a nice, um, you know, kind of boost overall in just awakening a few of my monsters. But when I got them to... The three star mark, um, I definitely felt like uh, things were really moving in the right direction. Um, now, one thing to kind of point out, I'm sure you've seen this uh, quite a bit, especially with some of the other YouTubers and streamers out there in the community. Uh, making sure that you manage uh, some of those awakening resources is extremely important. Uh, prioritizing the ones you need without getting too out of hand when it comes to your natural five stars. So, if you know to take note here, the natural five stars, um, when you get to that three star awaken, they're going to require. Uh, they're going to require the legendary awakening material and the legendary awakening material is something that is 
you know, really hard to come by. You're gonna get a couple in the Tower of Promises. You're gonna get a couple when you six star your monsters. But of course, it's not like you're six starring monsters all the time, right? You're you're doing it, you know, you know, not not as much. Um, so make it sure that you know if you are, you know, have been fortunate enough to get a ton of Nat fives early on in the game, and you're starting to prioritize. Making sure you're not getting too ahead of yourself when you get those. Uh, you know, heroes, uh, you know, awaken and the three star because they are going to require legendary awakened material. And if you use too many early on, you're not going to be able to recoup and get some of the other uh, things that you want to get accomplished when it comes to improving some of your primary units. Uh, you won't be able to get it done. Okay. Um, next one up, or, or, or actually, I'll, I'll stay. I'll stay on the time shot for for a second here. Um, the awakening materials is going to be the biggest thing, and the orbs. Uh, with respect to the orbs, I know a lot of people said. You know, keep an eye out on the four star orbs and crests. Now, for me personally, um, while I thought that, you know, keeping an eye out on them would be great, uh, I realized that this game's a little bit different with respect to how the orbs and whatnot work. So, if you guys are familiar with this, I mean, in other games, um, you know, the quality or the grade of the, the particular orb that we're talking about here is definitely, is definitely um, you know, really something that you want to keep an eye out because the higher the the higher the quality of the room, whether it's four star, five star, whatever the case may be, um, the more value you can get when you max out the room. Whereas this particular game, um, the base, I mean, essentially, even though you're moving up in grades from two star to three star, three star to four star, ultimately looking at the orb in and of itself, um, there's going to be a little bit, a little bit of variance when it comes to that main stat. Um, you could have a, you could have a three star uh, concentration rune with critical rate on slot four, right? But um, if it, it might have and it might start out with like seven percent uh critical rate or it might start out with 7.5 percent critical rate it might start out with six percent critical rate so considering that you know every single level that you you know improve on that one goes up you know like 0.3 percent or whatnot here uh keeping an eye out on the ones that are uh have a little bit more value uh you know the, the, the higher ones and stuff like that sure that that could be something to look forward to but me personally um, we're talking about a very, very small change, uh, you know, essentially anywhere from half a percent to a percent and a half. So for me personally, I did not invest any money into the orbs. Um, if there were any like premium crest, maybe I'll take a look at it. But when you think about the, the, the price of the orbs and the crest, especially for the three star and four star ones that are out there, considering how much money you have early on in the game, I didn't think it was all too much of an investment as always. So if you guys have anything to say on that, um, you know, please feel free to put it in the comment section down below. Again, this is just my personal experience when it comes to the first month and, and bringing this, uh, bring this for you. Okay. Next one up, the one that you guys are going to be excited about, right? Uh, the black market. You know, what do you focus on? What do you look for? Me personally, I, it's, I, I hate to say this because I feel like a dirty gemmer, right? I feel like a dirty gemmer. But, you know, one of the things that I am looking out for is the premium Nat 5s. Uh, I'm not even going to lie right now. Uh, I'm currently in the process of collecting all of my thoughts to make a official, like, state of the game video um, where I'm going to essentially talk about just obviously the state of the game and kind of where I think it's at, what needs to be improved, what things to need to be changed for this thing to go low and so, or go, you know, go beyond. And so, you know, one of the things that, you know, blows my mind is the effect of uh, the natural five stars and being able to get those premium ones here. Now, uh, currently where this at, where this game is at right now, because of the fact that they, you have an opportunity to get any natural five star uh, for 8,000 rubies, uh, you know, as a free to play player, that could be a little bit hard. But if you're pay to play or if you're free to play and have been you know saving your resources here some of these uh heroes some of these units are super i mean they're super op they're, you can use it literally in three to four different aspects of the game i find it very hard not to consider buying a paper adonis a paper fran a paper Kerr, a rock julian a rock june i mean those are some of the most strongest uh heroes out there and i definitely would you know go for them scissor shaolin i mean there's there's a handful of them that that you can put down that says like i, I would buy them on the spot here but you know honestly uh i'm kind of you know here and there about it i don't know where they're gonna go with it but as of right now if they're gonna seriously offer the top premium monsters then yeah i gotta go for it i mean I, I as a content creator like you want to provide some stuff for you guys so i'm definitely going for it but i mean if you were just a regular player like 
to have some of the best units in the game, if the game's literally gonna allow you to buy it, like why not go for it, right? Um, Superior Scrolls. Uh, this is one of the few things in the black market shop. If you take a closer look, um, if you were purchasing them outright with rubies just in the regular shop, the value of what you get uh, through the black market is actually, actually going to be a little bit beneficial. The superior scrolls, you're going to be able to get three for 600 rubies. Um, the common and special arena keys, you're going to be able to get 30 for 180 rubies. Um, whereas, you know, you know, basically one summon is 350 uh, rubies and like one package of 10 uh, keys, whether it's regular arena or special arena, is going to be 100 rubies. So there's definitely a little bit of a savings if you go for that route. I, I take advantage of that. Um, I definitely do not invest any money on the gold. And I know that there are some of the YouTubers out there, streamers out there that have posted that they do spend their, uh, you know, resources, their rubies on gold because gold is a very, very rare, um, you know, thing to get. But um, what I'm going to be talking about next kind of allows me to collect the gold without too much worry. So me personally, I don't really feel like it's a good investment. Uh, a good example to be is like, I think for a million gold, you if you spend 4,000 rubies, you get a million gold. Um, whereas if you were to buy, like if you go to the regular time shop and you bought a five star fodder uh, for 750,000, um, you can do that for 750,000 or you can go to the black market and buy that five star fodder for a thousand uh, rubies. So when you think about 750, uh, you know, 750,000 uh, gold with respect to how the game is, you know, quantifying that value, that's essentially three, uh, 3,000 gems, right? Because if, if four, if, if 4,000 gems is 1 million gold, then 3,000 gems would be 750 gold with respect to their game. So when you look at the value of what the time shop shows you, or sorry, not the time shop, but the, yeah, the time shop shows you versus the black market, um, I think it's definitely not worth the investment with regards to gold. I would take advantage of the bonus time um, that is available for you. So uh, last but not least, when it comes to the black market, I think there was the five star fodder that I wanted to talk about. Early on in the game, I did not invest into the five star fodder, but once you get the first, once you move into hell mode, you get those first couple of six stars, and then you're able to kind of jump from two star, two six stars to five six stars re uh, uh, reasonably quick uh, because of the free extreme, the extreme growth five. You're gonna get those free fodders uh, through uh, putting your one star, two star monsters in your natural five stars. You know, get that first free quest. And also you're gonna get free five star fodders when you clear the hell stages here. So that that little bit of a boost, having two free um, fodders there for each element is really gonna help you move uh, throughout your, you know, you know, moving up with your six stars, you know, getting those uh, all set up here. So um, that was a nice little boost. And after that, I realized that even though I'm farming day in and night, I got the fodder and I'm, and I'm moving through it, I'm leveling them up and whatnot, but it definitely still has, you know, kind of got back to the, how it's leveled out. You know, it's taken some time to do it. So. Now, with regards to where I'm currently finished off in the arena, how I'm managing my resources, I'm definitely um, taking advantage of the five-star fodder for 1,000 rubies. Um, I, def I don't really recommend it. I mean, this is just, again, where I'm at here. Um, to speed up the process of uh, especially getting some of those uh, six stars that are really, really important for me, um, really uh, unique units that I want to incorporate on my team, uh, being able to save, you know, literally 20% of the process with 1,000 rubies, considering we're getting upwards of 400 to 500 rubies in a day via the different types of achievements, the events, you know, whatever is available. I mean, we're getting a lot of rubies, right? So, I mean, for me, a thousand rubies is, is I, I feel like it's justifiable. So, um, but kind of going on to finishing off the Black Mart and then talking about the uh, the bonus time. As of right now, you see me finish off this match here. The gold obtained is actually way, way higher than um, it should be. Why? Because currently uh, there is a kind of like little event going on called bonus time that generally starts, I think it's upwards of like five to six hours prior to the daily reset. And for me on the Asia server, it's at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm not 100% sure what time it starts. And I apologize. I should have some more information on that. But um, basically, um, I make sure that I am taking advantage of the farming. I mean, I just farm overnight, but I make sure, I really make sure that I'm farming uh, that early part of the morning for my day and you know making sure that I'm doing it all the way up until the reset. Why? Because um, different events that are going on, um, especially this one right now, we're getting 100% bonus on the gold for every single run. So 
um, that's a really good amount and then also sometimes they offer a, a 20 or like a 30% discount on the orbs so if I'm doing if that, if that discount is on orbs then I'm gonna take the time in the morning to uh, take a look at all the orbs that I've collected overnight and making sure that I upgrade them roll them out to you know the plus nine see if those substats are right so that I can prove the premium monsters that I'm looking for um, I think that's really important to keep it out especially for the units that you are definitely prioritizing so um, next one up is going to be the Tower of Promises. Uh, if you guys haven't really checked this out or maybe you're new to the game, this is going to be the easiest way to make your you know gold throughout the day. So um, unfortunately, you cannot buy keys uh, in the shop, right? You have to essentially wait for it to reset um, you know throughout the time, or you have to finish out uh, a couple of like daily quests in order for you to get a couple extra keys. Um, you could hold up the six keys and it takes about an hour to generate each key So it's extremely important to keep an eye out on You know when your timer like you know when it ends up so that you're not losing any opportunity to gain those keys throughout the day um, Now for me personally, I am you know, I've been able to clear tower promises up, you know up to this point and I'm able to auto I think upwards of like I think I do either 54 or 57 but for some of you guys that are, you know, getting set up here, um, I know that uh, this auto mechanic, what they provide to you in the game, it's really nice. It's really, uh, it's re I just, I just really enjoy it. But when it comes to, you know, uh, giants farming or when it comes to tower promises farming, I'm gonna actually recommend to do it manually, since you, especially for the tower promises, since you don't have, um, you don't have the opportunity to uh, collect. Like you don't have the opportunity to replenish it or whatnot, and it's something that's very limited. You do not want to risk um, not like like losing and then losing that potential of whatever it is twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand gold uh, for a rounder. That's that's an extremely important amount of gold. And if you guys are like me, everybody knows it's happened once or twice where like you start the tower promises, you're looking to auto it, and then for whatever reason the skill auto uh, the auto function is not on, and you're sitting there basically autoing until you die, and you lose out on that opportunity for those like 30,000 plus uh, gold or whatnot. So uh, shout out to everybody that's gone through that process. Epic fail, right? It's hard, it sucks, but it is what it is. Learn from your mistakes and, and just manual it so that you can guarantee yourself uh, the money. And then if you think about it, if you decide to manual it, that allows you to push a little bit higher with regards to the ones that you can manual versus the ones you can auto. So you're gonna be able to get a little bit more gold uh, for your time, okay? Uh, next thing that I wanna throw out there is I got my own checklist. I think this is gonna be a big thing for you as well. Uh, for the collection codex so two weeks ago we talked about how you can get yourself some free natural four stars some free natural five star summons um, some free titles if you collect the uh, different uh, heroes in the game and there is a there is like a limitation i think the cap is 55 and it seems like it's almost unachievable unattainable but the thing of it is is that not only each monster that you obtain counts, but the ones that you can awaken is, a, is a, essentially a new monster here. So, you know, I have a list on my computer here of all the different, um, I, right now it's just three stars and up, but all the different, you know, one stars, uh, or sorry, the two stars, the three stars, the four stars that I currently have um, that need to be awakened. And uh, I want to obviously make sure that, you know, after a day of, you know, farming awakening materials, after I have done what I need to do to prioritize my main heroes or whatnot if I have some extra awakening materials and I have certain monsters that have um, that still need to be awakened so that I can improve my codex there I'm gonna definitely do it because obviously I want the free rewards is it something that you need to really really focus on no not necessarily you're gonna get it done over time um, it's not a really big deal but if you're like me that is uh, definitely trying to uh, get you know get those free titles get those free natural five stars so I can summon especially for some of those that are focused on the different factions and we have different events going on with Benito and Shaolin I mean it's I think it's very very important to make sure that you're prioritizing or sorry to make sure that you are taking advantage of that when you can okay when you can and again uh, keep in mind that not every single two-star uh, can be awakened there's only some that can so you know and we're gonna be getting a lot of uh, free fodder there when you're farming, you know, throughout the day, um, and then you're doing the summons, the normal summoning scrolls, you're getting the one star to three star, making sure you're keeping an eye out on that, okay. Um, next one up is something that I threw away quite a bit, I did not keep my eye out on, and that's the Destiny Dungeon. So, a month into this game, I've, I believe that I'm, I'm at the point where I can easily clear the majority of the four star Destiny content, or the Descendant content. Um, Descendant Dungeons is essentially like, you know, like almost like a Hall of Heroes where they have different natural four stars and natural five stars that you can 
uh, you know, clear and get some pieces so that you can go ahead and summon it down the road, right? So natural four stars, I don't have any problem with natural five stars. It's definitely a struggle, but I still go for it. You know, um, uh, for me personally, um, doing the challenge and seeing what I could do, learning learning that basically the boss and how he works, um, it's one of the you know most it's one of the funnest things I've ever been able to experience in this game. Um, they really, I mean, it feels like I'm, I'm I'm playing some like MMORPG, and there's like this raid boss, and you got 30 people here, and you got to figure out the strategy. You know, I think now that's that's essentially where the game is right now uh, for me. So. You know, getting, making sure that I can get the ones that I can clear done, extremely important, especially if they are a four-star hero that you really, really want. Um, you know, I'm keeping my eye out on the Rock Tyler. You know, there's been, you know, talks about him being, you know, one of the best strikers. Ah, not as good as strikers, you think. Me, personally, I would love to have him. I think he's really, really good considering the level and the grade that he's at. So I'm keeping an eye on him and other different heroes here. So that's definitely something you want to keep at, uh, keep an eye out on. So, um... Now, speaking of dungeons, I'm just going to go right into the daily dungeons. Um, they're not daily dungeons. I mean, you're going to be clearing those. You're going to be clearing the enhancements. I mean, all that stuff is normal. But the the secret dungeons, excuse me, the secret dungeons. So secret dungeons for me, um, you know, obviously you're going to have people on your friends list. They're going to clear them and they're going to open it up for you. Now, in the current state of the game, the value of farming these secret dungeons, the amount that you get, the percentage of you getting one piece versus two or three, is extremely uh, in favor of the one piece and so for me personally I do not feel like uh, it's worth the time to go ahead and clear it however uh, one of the things that we've been talking about in the d6 community is you know when you're starting to look into the mid to late stages of the game you're looking at creating compositions that will allow you to easily clear giants will allow you to easily take down some of those conquest heroes and so there are a couple of units out there that I would definitely keep my eye out on um, you know if you haven't already um, one being Rock Ignis, um, that's definitely uh, a really important one. And then, of course, uh, Tian Jin, uh, who's a paper unit here. Um, both of those are really important three-star monsters that can uh, be essentially like free-to-play monsters for you um, when it comes to creating some of those dot-based giant teams and conquest teams. So uh, if I saw those open, I more than likely would go for them because the value of getting those two units skilled up is extremely important and even though i'm like i'm obviously you know i'm summoning here and there so i'll be able to collect them over time but uh um considering that it's a limited time and um how long it takes to skill those up you know from like level three to level four level four to level five i will take my time and try to get as many pieces as i can um I, again it's i don't think it's a, a good recommendation for people early on in the game stay away from the secret dungeons uh, if possible here but if you are if you've been pushing you know you are sitting here you know, two, three, four, four weeks in, and you, you've kind of solidified your teams for the regular scenarios, but now you're looking to uh, really play around with the uh, dot base teams, and maybe you don't have a paper Helga, or maybe you don't have any other unit that provides uh, debuff duration. Uh, those are two units that I'm definitely going to recommend. They're super, super OP. We see a lot of people out there. Real quick, uh, shout out to Metacom. I think he just recently made a video talking about, I mean, we had a couple of people mention it, but uh, you know, he, he recently made a video um, they got a you know good response because of the fact of you know those are like literally the two best uh, free to play units out there for you when it comes to creating your giants team. So um, last but not least, there I'm gonna finish off with the orbs and the crests. So uh, you know obviously after a week, sorry after uh, an evening or a work day of you know doing farming and you know going through like 500, 600, 700 keys, uh, you're gonna have a ton of different a ton of different orbs to kind of go through. And so when it comes to this game, where we're kind of currently at, we are getting a lot of natural four stars and natural five stars from our, you know, premium packs and whatnot here. So we have this, we have this issue of, you know, trying to uh, orb up or, or, you know, basically build up everybody, right? So again, kind of going back to the, to the things that you already know about, you know, take a look at your account and seeing which ones are going to provide the most value for you. Um, checking those out and then you know seeing what kind of subsets you're looking for that's the ones you want to focus on you know you know prioritize those and then you know take a look at your secondary units for secondary comps and then you know go ahead and you know orb those units up so that you can uh, you know get your stats up you know for those um, for me personally right now you know early on in the game I was just focused on you know getting like we've always recommended you know get, getting to the point where we can collect those three star orbs right early on in the game it was just hey get you know get the one star get, get the orbs on there Taking them, if you have two store orbs, you know, taking the plus six, and that's fine. Don't sweat, don't sweat the actual stats. And that's not a big deal. Now you're moving into hard. You're saying, okay, now I want the three store orbs with the percentage rate stats. You know, that's like super important, right? Um, get them to plus nine. Take advantage of those subsets that you can get. You know, that was really, really important. 
Uh, me personally, now I'm still stuck on the three star orbs. I'm obviously I'm I'm, I'm moving over to the four star orbs uh, when I can. But honestly, I'm keeping an eye out on some of the three star orbs that have the right subset. So. I'm looking for orbs that have the innate substats that I'm looking for, percentage-based innate substats, whether they're offensive or defensive, that they have attack or defense, or if they have status activation or debuff duration or buff duration or cooldown reduction. I mean, all of these are premium uh, innate stats that you're going to be looking for. And you know, when I collect those and I say, you know, I save all of those, then I, um, if I have the gold to do it, I'm going to roll it out and roll it to plus nine and see how they roll out. Um, because when you think about where this game is currently at and the certain different types of uh, mechanics, especially like status activation, for example, whereas the stat act status activation is a direct, uh, is a direct, how do I say, response, or it's a, the amount that you get percentage wise is a direct impact on, on your particular unit. Whereas in other games um, where you were to get, you know, a level, a unit like skilled up, uh, you would, uh, if you would like, it would be like a two percent increase, but it would be two percent of the original twenty percent. So it'd be like twenty one or twenty two percent. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be like, like if there was a ten percent. Yeah, if there was like a ten percent bonus to your original twenty percent. It'd be ten percent of twenty, which is two. So it'd be twenty two percent. Versus this game, when it comes to status activation, if you have a fifty percent chance to land an effect and you get um you know a couple of bonuses that equal 10 percent status activation that takes it from 50 percent to 60 percent all day so when you think about you know the importance of landing your harmful effects especially for the conquest the giants um doing what you got to do to get the right substats on all of your orbs on all of your crests is extremely important you can definitely make up for the lack of uh, percentage on the particular hero uh, obviously you can improve it when it comes to skill ups but if you don't have the skill ups you can get it done with the orbs and the crest so keep an eye out on your premium orbs roll them out and even though it may be like ooh, this one says it's attack percentage with an attack and a substat i gotta put it on my julian right because he just i want the most attack possible now if it had if it had like uh you know debuff duration i'm gonna keep it on it but if it had um you know something like some some defense and maybe some you know, cooldown reduction and it was like a bravery rune or something like that. And uh, I'm, I might be, you know, I might be looking at putting them on my scissor colada because even though she has a cooldown acceleration, anything that I can prove for reduction of cooldown so that I can get her main skill up that's gonna allow everybody to uh, reduce their cooldowns, like I think it's really important. So I might do that. So that's gonna be it, guys. I know that we were looking to do some special arena, but because of the video being just a little bit longer than I generally like to do, we're gonna go ahead and close it off right there. And then the next one will be focusing around the special arena and some of the you know premium natural four stars that people have been messing around with, what I've currently seen uh, in that four star great arena meta here. So that is gonna be it guys. Thank you all so much for your support. Again, if you guys are new to the game or maybe haven't tested out this game, definitely check downstairs uh, in the YouTube description down below if you're looking to go ahead and test out this game. Uh, if you guys did find this video useful in any way, please feel free to hit that like button and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care.